afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Booley. We'll be discussing a very important topic on Afternoon Express today. If you've recently graduated from high school or have a child who's recently graduated, then you've chosen a good time to tune into Afternoon Express. Today, we're joined by a number of experts to discuss what options are available to high school graduates who aren't planning to further study or can't afford to further their studies. And some of the topics we'll be covering are figuring out what you want to do with your life, the first step, jobs that require no experience, gap year options available like working abroad, chatting to a real life high school graduate. Um, not alone in the house today. Danilo is looking like a high school graduate himself. So adorable. <laughs> the other options you can do with your life after high school is just eat yourself into sorrow, misery if you didn't make it through. You want to go and find something to study after school. With me in the loft today in the kitchen, I'm very excited today to be cooking with somebody who I think is one of the coolest chefs we've had so far. Uh, Ming Chao Lin, welcome to Afternoon Express. Thanks very much, Danilo. So I've got a little joke for you today because we're making a dish that's got a pronunciation that I think everyone in South Africa is probably worried about today. Hit me. So it's basically the dish we're making is what happens when the real bees fly to the queen bee. And you know what they do? They bow and they go, Zzz. No, bow no, 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 <laughs> is, that pronounced? Is, that, is that pronounced correctly? Bow -tzu? You did good. Yes. <laughs> Nailed. Not the joke. Okay, so <laughs> what exactly is a baozi? Um, so baozi literally means uh, to be wrapped. Okay. Um, so now this is basically a steamed bun and it's made with dough and on the inside you have a cabbage and pork mince filling. Mm, Obviously delicious. seasoned with a whole variety of spices as well as soy sauce. Mm. It's, it's really awesome. And then this is one of the fundamental things that you get as street food in Taiwan. Amazing. It's one of those things we also get taken out for a really expensive dinner in South Africa. You can also go for dim sum. This is one of my favorite dishes to eat yes. from this. I'm looking forward to make it. And you can cook along with us simply by going to afternoonexpress.co.za. That's where you can find the recipe and the shopping list and you can make along this amazing dish with us right here on air. So it's all about the graduates, what happens after high school. Bonnie's got our first guest on the couch. So you've graduated successfully from high school. You've enjoyed the December holidays, but 2016 has begun, and what now? For many of us, it's a very confusing time. And for those of you who haven't already enrolled in a tertiary institution, it can be quite stressful. So here to help point us in the right direction is educational psychologist Casey Annerly. Welcome. Thank you. So the all-important question, which is a question that will affect the rest of our lives, what now? What is the next step? How do we approach this? I think this is a question that parents, teachers and students start to ask. You know, it's been 13 years sometimes of long, hard work. I think a lot of us forget that there are a lot of different pressures that, that um, students face these days mm -hmm. with social media, with um, just different issues that we didn't really have in those days. So I think it's really important firstly just to acknowledge that you have finished 13 hard years of right. school. Right, yeah, and those are 13 very hard years. I'll never yeah. forget those 13 years. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> what about those people who don't know what they're good at and who don't know what they're passionate about and they don't want to make the wrong decision? How do they go about finding out? We hear that quite a lot, and I think it's really important just to really take some time out to figure out what you like, mm -hmm. doing things that you really enjoy. And I always suggest to people that they go and chat to family, to friends, go and do perhaps a career assessment if that's something that they'd like to, to have a look at. But I think it's really important, the first step starts with research and finding out a bit more about yourself because right. really that's going to lead you into what you're passionate about. I heard you say chatting to family. Is that mm. always advisable? Because sometimes the direction that your family or your parents want you to take is mm. not the one that you're feeling you want to pursue. Can that cause a lot of pressure and conflict? Definitely. For Often we find uh, parents who come in and, and start um, chatting you know, ab about different areas with their, with their kids. It can be a really stressful time because they often are not all that aware of what the different options are today. Because right. they're very different careers that we had, you know, that your generation and my generation will have, yeah. as well as parents and children now. Yeah. Um, for instance, five years ago there wasn't a social media manager. So it's, right. it's a lot of actually just researching and finding out together. I think it's an important process for learner and parent to do together. And even though it's a supportive role that the parent will play, it's really the independent decision of the student. Yeah. And often it's their role to convince their parent of their passion of their skill, mm -hmm. and just basically why that, that career will appeal to them. And that can be quite an exciting journey. How does an aptitude test work, and is it worth taking one? 
an aptitude test is basically to determine your strengths and your weaknesses. Okay. So we always like to have a look at your strengths or your skill level and we look at it against your interest level. So that could mean that your strength could really be in math, Sam, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. your interest isn't always there. Right. So you right. often find that um, often parents might be pushing a student to take something that's very maths orientated. Um, so the skill might be really high, but the interest isn't always there. Right. So we like to marry your aptitude, your skills, your interest, and your personality. Because it's really important then to get a mixture to determine what kind of career would suit you instead of the other way right, around. Right, right. That's, yeah, I mean, that makes so much sense. What about students who can't afford to study further and those who don't want to study further? Mm. What advice do you have for them? There's definitely a trend towards perhaps not studying and taking the, the formal study route. Um, we're often finding now that um, students are becoming quite entrepreneurial on their mm. own. I think they start to see different avenues and different uh, uh, st uh, career paths. And I think it's quite interesting to see then how they, in their own initiative, will take on different um, study paths um, or even just training. There are lots of learnerships, there are lots of um, graduate programs, there are lots of volunteer programs, and we often talk about a gap year as well yeah. for those people yeah. who are not all that sure about what they would like yeah, to do. Yeah, I took a gap year. I thought Did that you? was very beneficial. Did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, how can parents approach this decision-making process without putting pressure on their children? And what should they just be mindful of in that space? I think it's very important to have an open relationship first, so to really spend the time getting to know your child and what their dreams yeah. are for the future. Because yeah. sometimes you find that what your own dreams as a parent don't always marry with that of your child. Mm -hmm. So often we find then that it's really impo an important process to sit and help your child do the research. So have a look at the different options. As I said before, talk to family, um, talk to friends to really get an idea of what different careers will involve. Right. But then I really do think it's a, it's a process, a family process with a, definitely with a parental support yeah, structure. Yeah. How does a, a young person inform their parents that they don't want to study <laughs> without disappointing them? <laughs> we hear this quite a lot. Yeah. Um, I often then chat to the student and I like to discover what, what they are interested in so that they've really researched the different areas because we often find that you might have someone who's interested in becoming an actor or a dancer or something that's not typically the, the known or the accepted type careers in a traditional The harder sense. careers, the I harder like to say. Careers, <laughs> the harder careers. <laughs> so often then it's just involved with um, the research, really right. what those, what those right. careers are really yeah. talking about. Yeah. And then I often then you know, advise students to really think about how they would like to explain their passion to mm. their parents. Yeah. Because really it's the passion that's going to drive yeah. you yeah. in a career. Wow. It's that balance between passion and hard work yeah. that's going to push you through. This is very valuable information. You're not going away. We're going to chat more <laughs> a little bit later. Thank you so much. Kate. Thank you. Make sure you join the conversation on social media. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or leave your thoughts on our Facebook page. We might be reading your comments live a bit later in the show. After the break, we're making Taiwanese steam buns with food blogger Ming Chao Lin and we're joined by an online recruitment specialist to take a look at jobs that require no experience. Don't go away. Willie's and I collaborating to raise 100 million rand through the My School program. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, can you believe that it's been a while since I've been in this kitchen? And I'm very excited to get going with the dish that we're making today because it is something exotic, it's something different, and it's come from a personal experience that you've been through, Ming, and I'm very excited to cook it with you. And can I just say also that South Africa, your tweets that are coming through for the show today are hilarious. I'm really, really enjoying the interactions on the show today. So, first of all, remind us again of what we're making. Okay, so we're making um, Taiwanese uh, steamed buns, and it's called baozi, which literally means a package. Okay. So, the first thing you do, obviously, is to have dough. Yes, which make the package itself. Yes. Make the package itself. So we've obviously prepared some dough beforehand. Obviously, it needs to proof. Mm -hmm. um, Those who don't know what proofing is, basically, it's just letting it stand for a bit to let all the yeast and stuff react and exactly. for it to puff out. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So is that what that is? Yes, that's Done. that guy. Yes. Okay. Then what's the next part? Obviously, putting the filling in, right? Yes. Yeah, so, well, I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to roll out the dough and mm -hmm. make that up. 
while you mix the filling together. Okay, so, so you've conveniently put everything together <laughs> here for me. <laughs> and but what's uh, awesome about this is that you literally just chuck everything together amazing. and mix it. So okay, there's cool. no this one has to go first, that one has to go first. Just go for it and mix. I can do that. That sounds <laughs> really simple. Okay, well, you can talk us through exactly how to do that. Have you obviously the recipe on the website will have how to make the dough itself? You obviously make your own dough. You don't go yes. and buy. I usually make my own dough, but the thing is, you can actually just buy store bought dough for this. Okay. Um, the only real difference is that you we actually use milk and a bit of oil inside the dough as well. And that's actually what's, yeah, that gives it that silkiness and that little poof at the end, which is pretty amazing, and the sweetness of the buns. Delish. So by the way, just while I'm putting things into here, I want to tell everyone what these are, because there are some really cool ingredients that we've got so far. I mean, there's a white cabbage you've got here, which you can get from most supermarkets, I'm sure. Yes. Can you replace it with a normal cabbage? Yes, no, you can actually use both cabbages. It's just okay. that this cabbage, the Napa cabbage, is specifically one of the most, uh, the most nutritious cabbage in the oh, wow. cabbage family. I didn't so know that. That's actually why I like to use it more often okay. than regular cabbage. So I've also thrown in some, we've got some pork in here, ground up yes. pork, yes. mince, which you've got in here. There's some spring onion that we've thrown in, some garlic, and what, what are these other things? What's this? So you have julian ginger, just to get some julienne nice ginger. sharp ginger I'm sure you can use any cut, it doesn't have to be julienne, but yes. okay. Uh, some salt, some Chinese five spices, and white pepper, okay. as well as sugar. Sugar, oh yes, because the steam ones always are yummy. Obviously yes. one full egg, hey? One full egg, and just drop cool. that in. That's what keeps everything together nicely. And then a little bit of oil, and a bit of sesame oil. So this is sesame uh, yeah, oil? Yes, so that's sesame oil, and then a little mm. bit of soy sauce as well. Oh, Obvi obviously, yum. being okay. Asian. And yes. Yeah. So obviously, your this dish itself came from a trip that you recently went with your fiance, by the congratulations, yes. oh, thanks, uh, to go and travel to mom and dad in Taiwan, yes. and you came back with this dish. Is this one of his favorites? Yes, actually. Well, the thing is, we've I've been making this since I was yay high with okay. my parents, you know, sit around the TV and make stuff. <laughs> um, but this trip was basically to um, it, to show my fiance the experience of Taiwan mm. and also to get to know the food and how awesome all the food actually is. Okay. So his favorite out of the lot was um, baozi, and okay. we got it freshly steamed from the baskets. You literally go there and you say you want Yum. five, and then they open the baskets, it's steaming up at you, and Delicious. then you get some fresh. So it's a whole experience it's at the same time. It's a whole time. experience. Even just to the smell itself, before this goes and gets itself cooked, it smells delicious, it looks amazing. What else do we need to do? Because you're busy rolling up things yes. there. Yes, okay, so dough-wise, after you have, um, basically you split up your dough into two so that this, this recipe um, that you get with this uh, basically makes about 12 to 14 buns. Okay. So you need to divide it up so that you have 14 pieces, pieces. obviously, okay, to cool. work with. Now, what you do is obviously you get little discs, but make sure that they're still a little bit thick yes. because you don't want it to be too thin. That's yes, where the poofiness break. of okay, it cool. comes in. So now what you, obviously, what you do as well is you actually just roll out to the edges so that they're a little bit thinner. So that you can fold them up. So those are the, the parts you're going to apply with. Okay. Exactly. And then obviously you put the filling in the middle. And please, can you show us how to do <laughs> that whole folding thing? Because the restaurants make it look so cool. I want to be able to do that too. Cool. So well done. This is the mixture. Yeah, you can use my one. My I'm one looks use good. Use yours. Yeah. Use that use little yours. bit there. Cool. So you get about um, a tablespoon's worth or so. This is a okay. teaspoon. So just do a little bit more. More meat the better. There we go. Exactly. Nice. True South African size. Kay. Okay, and then you pinch it with one hand, take your other hand, pinch it again, and you fold it on top. Okay. So you're almost kind of creating a little pleat, but <gasps> over each other oh and over, over, oh, and I over. I see, and that creates a little twirl. Yes, it creates a little twirl. Then you just pinch it together so that it stays together, and then you roll it together on top. Oh, so you close so, the hole. Yeah, so you close the hole, and it makes a little crater. Delicious! Yeah. Well, we're going to finish off the rest of those. Maybe what we can even try and do is get our social media team to make sure that we post a video on Facebook on how to do that folding thing because it looked, I think everyone was going like, how do you do that so fast? <laughs> but you can find all the other things like the recipe and the shopping list on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. It's not as difficult as it might seem it is and it tastes so delicious. We'll try to make the rest of this recipe later on right here on Afternoon Express. In the meantime, Bonnie's on the couch chatting after school. Now, thousands of high school graduates from across the country are stuck with the age-old paradox. A job requires experience, but you need experience to get a job. Today in The Loft, we have a representative from South Africa's number one online job portal, Carmel Brains, who will be informing us of the many employment opportunities that don't require skills, experience, or a qualification. Welcome, Carmel. Thanks, Bonnie. So how does one portray themselves as qualified for a job for which they don't have a proven tra track record? Well, I would suggest the first place to start is by putting together a CV. And this should really include some of the experiences that you um, have an opportunity to explore, to explore at high school, whether it's uh, sporting activities or anything mm. that you've really excelled in, anything that you've uh, done from a cultural perspective, 
even community service, being involved in a church, any of those examples are really good and do show some kind of initiative. Right, right. What are some of the jobs that don't require experience or qualification? Gosh, there are quite a few. I think a good place to start if you want uh, more corporate experience would be applying at some of the big financial services companies. They often have programs where they would take matriculants and train them in and specific, them. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly, in specific fields, uh, like a sales advisor, or maybe even specifically in financial services or in a call center. Other opportunities would be really simple, um, opportunities where you can work your way up. I know I did a lot of waitressing when I was in high school, and I think that just yeah, teaches you, <laughs> yeah, it's customer service, yeah. it's, it's approaching people and just building that level of confidence. Yeah. Does unpaid work help you get a job like volunteering or an internship? And how do you position yourself when you're applying for that particular job? Absolutely. I think any, any opportunity like that would really help. It shows initiative and it really shows a positive attitude. I think when it comes to um, internships or learnership opportunities, these are really experiences where you gain actual work experience. Mm. A learnership would be registered with a CETA. Um, it's a requirement from the Department of Labor to ensure that we can address a skill shortage. And this is an opportunity to obtain a qualification as well as gain work experience. And often there's opportunities for permanent employment within the company thereafter and an opportunity to work your way up. Right, right. If there's a particular company that a, a matriculant wants to work for, do you suggest that they volunteer or that they apply for a learnership or an internship? How do they go about it? Absolutely. I think the best way to, to start would be to research the company. Mm -hmm. Often these companies have their own careers pages or they would advertise vacancies on a site like ours. And it's a good opportunity to also get a better indication of the company. Yeah. You yeah. can apply via your cell phone or typically online, which is a yeah. great way to start. Yeah. And use your CV, use your CV to sell those skills and also do your research. There's yeah. so much information, you can simply Google any information on the company. Yeah. And if you're going to do unpaid work or a uh, learnership or an internship, what's a fair amount of time to work for unpaid? And when do you know that you're now actually being taken advantage of? Gosh, I, I think that's quite an important point. You obviously don't want to be exploited. Yeah. I think if you aren't being paid, an important thing is to determine upfront how long the opportunity is going to be there for. If there's any possibility for permanent appointment thereafter, I think a very, very good point is to always ask for a reference. If you feel you're doing good work, make sure that the employer can actually give you a reference and validate the experience that you've gained training and yeah. basically performing the job. Yeah. I mean, outside of being an entrepreneur, do you think there's a limit to how high you can go if you're applying for a job that doesn't require qualification or experience? Gosh, it really depends. It depends on the opportunity. It depends on your attitude. I think attitude is such a big bonus when you don't have work experience. It just makes sense if you're able to start at the bottom and you can show initiative. A lot of employers are more than happy yeah, to start yeah. allocating more opportunities to you and, and find a way training. to exactly yeah. and find a way to retain you. Yeah. If you've got a good attitude and you you show the enthusiasm, you can certainly stay on. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Combo. Thank you. Remember, if you have any questions for our experts, then make sure you join the conversation on social media. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or leave your thoughts on our Facebook page. We might be reading your comments live a bit later in the show. After the break, we take a look at gap year options available to young South Africans and Danilo catches up with designer Sheldon Kopman to see the idea he's come up with Danilo's race day outfit. Pack. Goodness comes naturally. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, we're discussing what to do after school, and not everyone wants to get straight into a career once leaving school, and taking a gap year could be beneficial in some ways that you haven't even considered yet. Learning a new language, traveling the world, experiencing new cultures, earning work experience overseas are just a few of these uh, that you can benefit from when you take a gap year, particularly abroad from those. Now, what about those, uh, and how does this whole thing work with qualifying for it, applying for it, etc.? Joining us is Lee, who's uh, a marketing executive for SDA Travel South Africa, the world's largest student and youth travel agency to date. Lee has visited 26 countries so far, with new destinations being added to the list each year. 
welcome to the loft, Lee. It's Thank really cool you. to have you. Thank you. So, Lee, obviously, what you guys do is incredible. And I think the biggest thing that you're going to have today is mothers and children fighting over that remote because mothers and parents are going to say, no gap year, it costs money, and obviously, I'm not too sure what's going to happen after that gap year. And children are saying, but I don't know what I want to do with my life. Right. What is a gap year? Well, that's a gap year is basically that space that you take between 12 or 13 years of studying. Mm. And it's time you take out to kind of just figure out what it is that you want to do. What yep. is it that you're interested in? Um, sometimes I think parents often have an expectation of children to, or, or our kids to just kind of go into tertiary education and perhaps yes. you're not ready. Perhaps you just need to take some time out. So gap year is there mm. to kind of sort that out. Sometimes it's three months. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a full year up to 12 months. It really is at the discretion of the individual. True, but I do think there's a, there's a need for finding a balance in that gap year because I think some children go like, oh, I don't want to go study yet, I'm too lazy, and therefore I'm going to go in a gap year. I think gap year needs to have a little bit more focus than that. Right. There are different type of gap years as well. Sometimes you could do an internship Perhaps you could do a short study course, so not necessarily full-on tertiary education, but no. maybe a six-week online course. That's an option as well. You could volunteer. That's oh. also something you could do during a gap year. You can travel. You could work and travel. Those are also options. So there are different type of gap years that one could take. So it let's, just kind of depends. Let's talk about some of those, because I think the exciting one for me would be the work and travel experience, mm. because number one, you get to pay off all of your travel fees by working. Two, you're getting experience. And three, you're actually learning about the working world. You're getting hands-on experience. How do you go about applying for something like that? And who, who would be the ideal candidate? There are different type of programs that one could sign up for. Um, for a recently matriculated individual, for mm -hmm. example, so you don't necessarily have the experience, you don't necessarily have a degree or a certificate or a diploma, there are options for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, everyone's like... <laughs> um, one of those options is au pairing. Yeah. Um, that's a great one for ladies, especially um, in America. Mm. Um, or if you want to go to Europe, that's an option as well, and guys can actually also au pair. Awesome. It's not one of those things that's lady specific. Yes. <laughs> um, things that you need for that obviously you need a passport because yes. if you're going to go abroad that is the very first most important document that so you make need. sure all your things you, are up to date right you can't leave the country without a passport mm. um, as well as maybe 200 hours of um, care experience for yes. young children if, if you're going to au pair for example uh, and then there's a whole process that we undertake as well to make sure that you fit the requirements. Okay. Are you 18 years old? Do you have a driver's license? Mm -hmm. Do you have an amical personality? Mm. Um, what is your attitude? Would you be able to survive a year, maybe two years away from your family? Yes. Um, with those type of programs, though, there is support on yes, the ground I'm sure. um, in those countries. What about the Asians? I know in, in, in the Asian sort of specific, there's, there's a lot of opportunities available there for low skilled work. What kind of options are there available for us who maybe don't have those 200 hours or are not very good with children? There is also an option in Thailand to teach English. Ah. And people are like, whoa, I've just finished my trip. Yeah. I can't go <laughs> teach someone else English. Thailand is a great country because they look for native English speakers okay. to kind of integrate into their culture and teach Thai people how to speak English. Um, you don't necessarily need a degree mm -mm. or a certificate or a diploma. What is required, though, is something called a TEFL course or a TESOL course, yes. which is teaching English as a foreign language mm -hmm. or teaching English as a second language. Um, you can do an online course for that as well. It's 120 hours. It's a minimal fee. Um, and some, some of the programs that we place you with actually helps place you in schools oh, in see. Thailand. They help you with accommodation. They help you with flights. So the expenditure is there, but it's an investment because you're yeah. making that money back. Do you have time while you're doing this all to travel too? Do you, do you get experience culture oh, while you're there? Definitely. If, if you're teaching in Thailand, for example, you've obviously got your school terms. Mm -hmm. And then between those, you have your breaks. You have school holidays like we have in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And you have the freedom to travel during those times as well. Oh, amazing. Well, let, let's move because I think that's excited a whole bunch of people already. But let's turn our attention maybe away from the working and traveling mm -hmm. experience. So what other options are available for us in a gap year scenario? Well, one could volunteer as well. That is also <sighs> an option. So perhaps you you have a bit of a, a social side to yourself mm -hmm. or a humanitarian mm. side to yourself. Um, you can do it in South Africa. One doesn't necessarily need to leave the country yeah. to be able to experience something like that. Okay. Um, as, as one of the guests said previously, it's a great thing to have in your CV as well, to say mm. that I volunteered here. Yeah, perhaps it's for three months, perhaps it's for six months, perhaps it's only for four weeks. It shows even. a sense of maturity even as well. Yeah, taking initiative, helping your community. Mm. Um, obviously, there's people skills that are, are developed in, in that kind of space as well, yeah. and that's really important. Totally, that's absolutely amazing. So there are lots of options available to people who maybe don't want to, don't know what they want to do, haven't applied for tertiary education, right. aren't working just yet. There's so many things, and I, I think the best thing they can do is just maybe come and chat to you and see yeah. what the options are with what they do have. One last thing, cost. How much do I need Me. in my bank? 
let me say this first. Whatever you spend, you will more often than not make back and make back more wow. than what you have spent. Okay. And I don't, I don't consider it as an expense more as what it is an investment. An investment yeah. So depending on the program, we would start at around 6,000 Rand and then it, it sometimes graduates up to 17,000 Rand, depending sure. on which program you decide to do. Yes. But like we said, more often than not, you are making that money back anyway. Totally. Yeah. And also be open-minded while you're in that process. So exactly. Lee, thank you so much for joining us in the loft today. I think this is very, very exciting. Hopefully more uh, viewers can get some more information from SDA Travel to find out exactly how they can get involved in their own gap year. And parents, please don't stress because I promise you, your children will go and study afterwards. I told my parents I'd do that. Didn't, but I didn't take a gap year too. So make sure that you use that time wisely, South Africa. It's time for us to go and check out what's happening with my outfit for the Met this year. It all started with a brief, as each of us shared our inspiration with the local designer to create a rare blend of fashion for the 2016 Met. Now we follow up to see how our creative energies have collided to form some intriguing outfit ideas for the big day. Well, we're back here at Naked Ape to meet up with Sheldon Kopman again to have a chat about some of the ideas that have been flowing for the Met 2016. We're about to create a rare blend. In our last episode, Danilo briefed designer Sheldon Kopman on his modern explorer muse for the 2016 Met, a rare blend of adventure. I hope your creative juices have been flowing, because mine have. Uh, since we last chatted, so I'm excited to have a look at what you guys have got here from a texture, color, things point of view, from an inspiration. I saw this yeah. in the rack, and I think it rocks. I like the idea of having the leather there. Tans are nice yeah, yeah. and summery, they're warm yeah, yeah. and fresh, but you've also inset it with the, is this a cotton? It's a cotton, 100% cotton. A little yeah. bit of stretch in it, so it allows you movability, but also allows you to have a nice sort of tailored silhouette. The Nappa leather is awesome because that is, it's light, it gives you that feel of luxury, it gives you that feel of I'm on the move. The hoodie has lots of attitude and I like the idea that you actually like the hoodie because this is something that I think we can incorporate into another design. Um, the color doesn't work. It's just not wow enough, you know, you need a little bit more, you need a little bit more punch. We have this, for example. Now what this is, it's a beautiful light. Whoa. It's got a linen weave, but it's an actual pure silk. But what we've done though to create texture within the garment, I mean look at that guy, look mm. at that, look at that cheetah, look at that, look at that face. Oh my word. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's all bleaching. Our jacket, right? Check that out at the back there. <laughs> Yo man, okay. So we can amazing. actually create detail in the fabric to show bringing that explorer feel. It could be yeah. that of the traveling man, or it could be an animal that is a constant traveler, and actually interpret that into the garment as yeah. well. Bring through the hoodie, give it that kind of vibe. So I would like to brighten it up, lighten it up a absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Do you think this dark black kind of has got that evening sort of formal Yeah, yeah, it's but more But the lightness charcoal, of yeah. this texture, mm. I love. I dig this so much. So I think the lightness is very, very yes. important, but then we need to play around with color. Also bearing in mind that Natural, we're either going to go with a natural color space or we're going to go with a color, like a natural color space would be ah. that kind of thing. So that is a lot lighter than the one you've seen previously. So it just has touches of oh, the leather. The details, through, really you know? Awesome. So it just has touches of leather. It's very fun in the interior, but the fabric is beautiful. It's a cotton linen. It breathes exceptionally well. And but it's it's solid too. It says, I have arrived. It says, I'm a man and I'm here. <laughs> so one thing I haven't really uh, kind of fiddled with is, is, is hair and hats and stuff. Because right, you've got a lot right. of really cool hats around. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, something worth exploring? part of your Italian heritage, man, is yeah. some hats from this, the 50s and so forth. So look, it's something that you can always try. And also, it depends on how you really wear your hat. Like, that's a lovely, and also falls into a, a travel, traveling man kind of space. Africa's hot. You always need a hat. So much swag, dude. I hope you guys are going to dig this. <laughs> yeah, but also, would you consider something like within this kind of space? Because I think this is really special, ah, man. You have. Damn. There's a lot of complexity to it. It shows a wonderful use of print, the way the two colors are coming together. Imagine a hoodie with that, bring a beautiful solid leather coming through there, contrast it with the pants, bring through a nice solid waistcoat. I think that could rock big time. I love this. I'll tell you why. Because number one, you incorporate that color into it. Yeah. Two, I like the fact that there's African colors involved in that, the sort of the yeah. way that the structures are done. It's still at the same time neat, but it says I'm here and I've arrived again. And too. it's light. The fabric yes. is a beautiful, beautiful cotton. It's yes, very yes, light, yes. it's breathable, and it also has the wow effect. After showing Danilo options on fit and fabric, Sheldon sketched up a look that would perfectly capture his desire to be an adventurer. I love this so much. This is perfect. The Met had better be ready for me. This is what I would refer to as a rare blend. Hats, colors, textures, naked ape, Danilo Cristo. Let's do this.
Stay tuned as designer Sheldon Kupman combines the unexpected for the ultimate rare blend of style for the 2016 Met. Wow, the Met is clearly not ready for Danilo. Now, if you want to show off your own rare blend of fashion at the 2016 Met, we're giving away an amazing VVIP experience to one lucky winner and partner worth 24,000 Rand. Prize includes flight accommodation and all transfers for the weekend to enjoy the 2016 Met in VIP style. Simply SMS the keyword Met along with your name and city to 33728 and it could be you. Remember SMS has cost 150 and T's and C's do apply so visit our website for details. Now after the break we share a story of a woman who graduated matric last year with flying colors after having to drop out when she was 12 years old to look after her parents. Really heartwarming story, don't go away. Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express live on SABC3. So glad you could join us. Joining us is Janine Mabuza of the class of 2015. Not only did she do well on her matric exams and get honored by the Western Cape Premier at the annual Western Cape National Senior Certificate Awards ceremony, but she thrived against all odds and she's here to share her beautiful story. Welcome, Janine. No, thank you. Well, congratulations on doing so well, oh, first thank of you all. Very much. But it wasn't easy for you. No, it wasn't. You had to all. drop out when you were 12 years old to look after your parents. Yes. Wow. What did that do to you? What did that feel like? Um, actually, because most pe people think it was only me, but it was me and my two brothers. My oh, other wow. brother who started, just started varsity and my younger brother who's two years younger than I am. So yeah, we had to drop out of school and start helping out around the house parents who were sick, but my mom was still okay at that time, mm -hmm. so she was also helping. And right after my dad passed, my mom got very ill. Wow. So yeah, and then two, a month and two weeks after that, my mom passed, and it was time to go back to school to decide either I'm going back to school or I'm not. So it's that. I mean, I'm sure the decision wasn't that simple. Did you have the funds to go back to school? And did you see yourself going back to school? Did you have the courage? I mean, going back to school then meant that you were going to be with younger kids in your class, right? Yeah. So luckily for me and my brother, my mom, when she, like, felt really sick, she decided that we coming here, uh, we coming to move with my aunt and uncle until she gets better. But what happened is we moved here, and two days after we got to my aunt and uncle's place, my mom passed. Sure. So... But like the promises we made, our parents are like, we're going to finish school and we're going to be successful no matter wow. what comes our way. So it was like I was motivated to go back to school. I didn't care about the kids being younger than I am because it was about my life, my success, what I want to do with my life. That's all I was thinking about. And I did it. That's so incredible. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where did you find the courage to do that? It, I, I mean, I'm 36 years old. And it's taken me a long time in my life to find that kind of courage to know that I can go through anything and succeed. But when you're that, that young, what inspires you? Like for me, it was, I was only thinking about my younger brother because he's also there. I need to support him because I'm his older sister. And my older brother took, took it upon himself to be there for us as his younger siblings. So if it wasn't for my younger brother, I really don't know where I would have been right now. But because of him, I got the courage. I was, I was going to finish school, and I'm going to be the example that he needs in his life. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. Now, was there career counseling available at school? And were you and your peers aware that there were other options available as well, should you not be able to study further? Yes, we did have counseling at school. We had, like, those hour pe periods. So we had this teacher, and she helped us. She told us that it, you don't have to go to varsity to mm -hmm. be successful. Yeah. There's a lot of things you could do, and she laid it out for us, and she let us use the internet and everything to research stuff like that. Yeah. So now you were invited by the Western Cape Premier to their house, to the yes. house, <laughs> to get honoured for your exceptional academic achievement and fortitude, and and striving on this despite everything else you were going through. What was that experience like? It was amazing. I really, it wasn't something I actually dreamed about getting because to me it was just finish my trick and be the best you was can possibly be. Was it a big surprise? Be. It was an amazing surprise. It was like I was shocked when I got the call the Sunday night. It was like, okay, 
I'm doing this. Well, this is fun. It just what did happened. you wear? What did you wear? Now I wear my um, <laughs> red dress uh -huh. and heels, mm -hmm. obviously, because mm -hmm. they told me to dress up. I was like, okay. <laughs> opportunity to dress up so go for it awesome so what are your plans for this year what are you doing now um, I'm planning on going to UWC to study social work but they st still haven't given me a final answer so okay. I'm still waiting so okay. after that I'll just see um, the happens. answer will come and yeah. it'll be a big yes <laughs> <laughs> what encouraging words do you have to matriculants out there who are going through a tough time and feel like they don't have what it takes to get through matric um, just that life draws you hurdles you know it gives you limit, limits. It gives you limits. You can decide what to do with it. Take it with vodka and be like, okay, this is what happened. And it's this, this is the situation. It's that it's fault that my life is the way it is. Or make lemonade and strive wow. and be happy. Wow, you are absolutely awesome. I'm so glad I met you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, let's head back to the kitchen and see what wonders Danilo has come up with. Sure, what an inspiring story. What I love most about people who've been through so much in their lives is they always come back wanting to serve and help other people who have been through something very similar to them. So, so much inspiration on the show today. I'm sure lots of you have got your pens and papers out and hopefully some Kleenex too at the same time. In the kitchen, however, I hope you're starting to drool in the meantime. We're making something delicious on the show today. Pao Tzu is what we're making and apparently this pronunciation is always in... in, in yeah, the, the good. intonations. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of Thanks, you. Thanks, Ming. I appreciate good. it. So, <laughs> since last UK saw us in the kitchen, we kind of folded up the, the, yes. the buns themselves. What happened since then? So, after you fold up the buns, you need to let them sit aside and proof them for about 20 minutes or so, okay. um, so that they can get nice, big, and poofy. Yeah. And then after Everyone that... Everyone likes nice, big, and poofy buns. Exactly. Nice, big, and poofy buns. <laughs> so then, <laughs> right after that, um, you pop them on the steamer. Mm. So, in your bamboo basket and over the stove, and you steam it for 15 minutes. Okay. And then Where can you get these baskets from? Because, I mean, no one has this lying in their backyard. You can honestly actually get it from any supermarket. Okay. But if, you, if you're struggling with supermarkets, you can always go to an Asian supermarket. Um, Amazing. They should be plentiful and around. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, let's finish off this dish because it looks delicious so far. What is that one busy cool. steaming? Yeah, so this one actually is just finished. So oh, nice. it's nice and hot. Oh, and there we go. usually they're actually white, but to mark the special occasion because I'm feeding you, we've used unbleached flour. Oh, instead. we like you. What is it <laughs> for unbleached and bleached? So unbleached flour is basically it still has all the well, the grain parts that make it brown, oh. and whereas bleach is to make it completely pure white. I see. Okay, yeah. so you're giving me the raw natural one. Exactly. So, Lovely. as you can see, it's nice and poofy over here, and then once Ooh, you break it open, oh, and Ooh, delicious. Just steam open. Mm, that so, looks so amazing. What's awesome about the steaming process is that, and also that you have to eat it immediately afterwards, yes. so that there's a slight bit of a brothiness that actually comes from um, the, the mince and the cabbage. Okay. And so it almost creates like the soupy effect inside well, the bun. You said you must eat it afterwards immediately, so. Yes. <laughs> no, wait, 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 we have a dipping sauce. Show me how to make it. Okay. So um, the dipping sauce is literally, uh, so you obviously, your soy sauce. Mm. It doesn't need to be wrong. by the way, it's delicious. <laughs> you can't go wrong with soy sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, some Julia ginger as well as some fermented soybean oh, and yeah. with chili. So mm. this is actually a condiment you can find at any Asian supermarket. It's one of the most uh, widely used one along with sesame oil, soy Lovely. sauce and um, sugar. So then you chuck that in. I like things with a little bit of a bite, obviously, because the sweet bun's got the sweetness in it. It's got that pork, which is also quite a sweet meat itself. With all of those uh, nice flavors inside, just a little bite might be delicious. Yes. So after a bite, you'll see that the dough can actually catch on to the sauce now. So you just dip it in. And you'll see. And it all just sits like that. Yes. And pop mm. it in mm. What do you think? That is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. I'm glad delicious. That. And if you guys obviously are going to want to make this at home at some point in your life, www.afternoonexpress.co.za is where you can find the recipe and the shopping list. They are delicious. Simple to make, in fact, and also something that's different for your family and friends if you want to make them too. We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, all of your comments and questions and stuff, all on the topic today about what happens after school. Don't go ahead. Five Roses blends only the top two leaves of the finest Ceylon teas. Because nobody makes better tea than you and Five Roses. Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express Live on SABC3 and welcome back to all our amazing guests. Now earlier today we ran a poll on our Twitter page where we asked if you had taken a gap year, if you have taken a gap year and what your experience was. The results were quite interesting. Now 20% said that yes with no regrets, 6% said yes with regrets, 33% mm -hmm. said no I wish I had and 41% said no I'm glad I didn't. Interesting, actually, Isn't that there were so many like that. Because I think the thing is, wow. young people feel, potentially, that if you take a gap year, you're never going to come back. Yeah, yeah. Is that truly? It, it could be. Yeah. You were a perfect example I'm of that. I'm still having gap years. <laughs> I feel like I'm still... <laughs> I, I went to university and it was phenomenal. I mm. enjoyed that experience. And after my degree, I went on a gap year. I took three yeah. months off and I travelled abroad. And I worked and I opened. And I came back and I went into the workspace and I was like, well, that travel bug has bit, let me go again. And I mm. went away for about a year and a half. Wow. But during that year and a half, I gained my experience. Yes. Um, I, I did the intern, I did the work abroad, and I've come back and I'm in the work field. And helping other people do exactly the same thing. There we go. Thing. Look at um, you. It, it depends on the individual, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes we get caught up with, oh, am I going to have enough money? And mm. that's where we come in and we help you budget. Or will I be able to manage being away from my family? We come in and we help with the support system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is support, uh, depending on what it is that you want to do. Mm. And I guess a lot of people, I feel like, still have this conflict between doing what they love and doing something that mm. they believe is going to secure a paycheck. Totally. And I don't think our education system has enough of a support structure to know what you're getting into once you've gone into a degree. You go do a degree and then mm. in the hope that you'll love it. And you end up two years down the line like, I don't know. So I'm glad you know exactly what you're doing. And I'm glad it's something to do with, with people because, I mean, that does give you life and you're contributing, you're adding value to the world. That's awesome, right? Yeah, it is. It's, mm. it's amazing. I'd love to see what you guys said on the social media sites. Petra Sikele says, yes, I did take a gap year. I was miserable most of the time because I was doing nothing productive. My gap year was just unplanned. And that's the thing what we just discussed today. Don't have an unplanned gap year. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen. You're going to sit at home, watch series and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a good point would be to set a limit for yourself. If you know yes. you're going to explore something in particular, give yourself a time limit. If you mm -hmm. haven't reached what you want to achieve in that time, mm -hmm. find something else. Go and explore another opportunity. Mm -hmm. And good, goals. Good advice. Goals as Ooh. well. Absolutely. So if you can show your parents that this is what I want to achieve in my gap year, yeah, totally. then that's often a selling point then, parents. Nice. Oh, you're, right, yeah. you're right. Charts. Now, <laughs> Chocolate Diva MP at MPV and Queen says, a gap year is not easy but it gave me time to think and now I'm living in the USA and travel here too. I'm glad I did it. Nice. You see, that's the exact opposite of those, which is really exciting to see. Yeah, there yeah. You, go. you have the option of living abroad. Um, your friendship circle increases. You broaden your horizons. Yeah. I learned that I appreciated South Africa a lot more because wow. I went abroad. Yeah, and you yeah. get to see how other cultures work and mm. you come back and you're like, wow, this country is amazing. Yeah, yeah totally. and it also increases your self-knowledge, which helps mm. in choosing exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life. Mm. Yeah. Well, a lot of young people also, the question I have to ask is, we, we don't have much mentorship going on, particularly in our, in, our, in our country, and I think it's exciting for young people to have organizations like this who they didn't know could help them in this process, just to decide what they want to do, because a computer system can push out your personality type and tell you that, oh, you should do X, Y, or Z, but you need hands-on experience. You need to go out there and do things before you go and study something for four years and come out the other end hating it yeah so what kind of advice do you have for people in terms of that first step actually knowing where to start searching gosh I think just to reference my own experience I really started things differently I took a gap here and mm. I went overseas I'd set a limit for myself and I came back and I found an opportunity through a friend and I really started in the recruitment business Mm. I then decided, well, there are certain aspects of this that I really love. I love the fact that I was changing people's lives. Finding awesome. a new job is life-changing. Mm. <laughs> and I then decided, well, there's a legal aspect to this that I really enjoy. And I started studying part-time and I funded my own studies, awesome. which is not really conventional. I didn't want to study what mm. my parents had suggested I should study. So but I you kind owned of your chose, future career. You owned it. Absolutely. Yeah. It I, chose, yours. I chose yeah. my own path. Mm. And I think with, with online, the, the, resource, the resources that are available to you and the, the information that's on any particular site, a job portal like PNET and the access to mm. 
agency jobs as well as corporate jobs. Everything is there, yeah. and you can do your research. It's just simply opening up a new tab and finding out more about the company. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. life doesn't end up that simple, though, I don't think. I know we've got right. a message on Facebook from Annette Roberts who says, I've matriculated 10 years ago and almost instantly fell into being a housewife and stay-at-home mom. Oh. So my work experience are basically zero. Now that all my kids are in school, I want to start working again. How do I go about applying for jobs now? At my age, everyone expects experience. What does she do? Gosh, I would say start online. I would also say start looking at your skills. Start looking at the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis that actually change lives. I mean, she's mm -hmm. looking after kids. That might mm -hmm. be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. yep. I think looking after children is so valuable. Often you're looking after a CEO's little boy or little girl, mm -hmm. and that opens up a new opportunity where you can start doing other errands, like a personal assistant to a CEO. Yeah. It's a good starting totally. point. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have experience again. with kids, it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> those are valuable things to a lot of people. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Really we'll cool advice. We'll be discussing advice. more on this mm. topic on the show next week, Wednesday. So stay Lovely. tuned for more information. Yeah. Well, that's what's happening next week. But tomorrow, make sure you guys join us again for Afternoon Express. And tune in early because during the first 15 minutes of the show, we catch up with local designer Gert Johan Kutsia. And in the kitchen, we're making a seafood one-pot wonder. It should be delicious. And make sure you guys go and check that out tomorrow right on Afternoon Express. And please tuck into these buns. They're you, amazing. I've had mine. You've already had one. I've had mine. The rest so you are yours. can't touch. <laughs> well, they just up South Africa. You guys have a great night and happy eating from us right here on Afternoon Express. Bye-bye. Do you want to take one of these? Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, model and actress Jeanne Kitzman joins us in the loft. And we take a look at the latest creations from renowned fashion designer Gert Johan Kutsia. Another feel-good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.